find the limit of the function, square root of four x plus one over x, as x goes to plus infinity and minus infinity. Let's start with x going to plus infinity. So here, we can assume that the x we're looking at are positive numbers. So, what trick am I gonna use? Okay, there's not a lot going on here, but the idea is this is a dry run for the case where we go x to minus infinity. So, if I take x, I square it, that's just gonna take x and throw away a minus sign if it's there. In this case, there's no minus sign. If I take the square root of that, okay, the x squared, square root cancel, and if there was originally a sign, that sign is gonna go away because square root only returns positive numbers. So in this case, the square root of x squared is just gonna be equal to x because x is positive. Now, I look at my limit. The denominator has an x. I'm gonna replace that with square root of x squared. Then I can move the square root around the whole entire quotient. So we're looking at four x squared plus one over x squared. And then we can divide x squared into everything, leaving me with four plus one over x squared over one. I take my limit. What's gonna happen? We're just gonna be left with four plus zero. One over x squared goes to zero all over one, or take the square root of four, and that gives me my limit of two. Okay, how about limit as we go to minus infinity? In this case, we just assume x is a negative number. So, as I reasoned before, if I take a number, I square it, square root, the net effect is return the number if it's a positive number, if it's a negative number, you're just gonna take its sign away. All right, if I'm a negative number, I take the sign away by multiplying by minus one. So that's the same as saying, okay, well, if I did that, that would be square root of x squared equals minus x, but we'll push the minus sign to the other side because that's where it'll be useful in taking the limit. I write out our term in the limit. What's that gonna be? Well, where I have x, I'm now gonna put minus x squared, pull the minus sign out in front, put everything under a square root sign, and then we proceed as we did before. We take our limit, we'll have four plus one over x squared. When I take the limit, the one over x squared goes to zero, so it's gonna be left with minus square root of four plus zero, or minus two. Now, we're not done yet we could still check our answer. Since I'm taking a limit to plus infinity or minus infinity in x, we could take some large numbers, stick them into our function, and see if the answers that come out are in the ballpark of two or minus two. Now here, we won't have to try very hard. If I put in x equal to 10 for our function, we'll note what comes out. We're gonna get 20.025 divided by 10, then that's gonna give me something that's pretty much two. So just checking at 10 is gonna get me close to my answer here. Now, to make sure I just didn't get lucky, let's put 100 in. You'll notice, okay, we're at 200, and then we're fine up until the thousandth place. We divide by 100, and then we note back at two. Okay, how about in the other direction? So why don't we check minus 10, minus 100. If you note, numbers aren't gonna change, the only thing that's gonna change is the sign of our denominator. So you'll see we're gonna get our same exact answers numerically, and then the sign in the denominator just changes everything to a minus two. So the check works out.